Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. A couple of weeks ago, by the way, the respective promoters Eddie Hearn and David Higgins were talking. An announcement of an Anthony Joshua Joseph Parker unification bout for 2018. It was seemingly just a week or two away. Hearn, who promotes Joshua, he actually said he'd like to get it all sorted by Christmas. So it sounded very promising, right? Both sides said they weren't that far apart, just mere percentage points away from agreeing how the purse would be split. And remember, David Higgins of Duco Events, which represents Parker, he dropped from an opening 50% purse demand to 40%, then to a 35% line in the sand cut of the net profits. And that would give Joshua 65%, the lion's share of the pie. But fast forward a couple of weeks to now, not much has really happened. Team Parker, they still won't accept less than 35%. And Anthony Joshua, he wants a 70-30 split, according to Eddie Hearn. Just a week ago, Eddie Hearn actually said they were willing to overpay to make the fight, saying, we're close, we're at a stage now, we're having to compromise on certain points that we don't really want to. But ultimately, we're going to have to, because if you want to fight Anthony Joshua... These guys, they want to be overpaid. So in this period of this black hole that we call negotiations, we've had an eager media which needs to fill its column inches, fill the website pages. It's been filling the void daily with similar sorts of angles. It's kind of been rinse and repeat, different place, different day, similar sort of stuff. One side wants too much money or the other fighter has some sort of edge over the other for whatever reason, etc. It's all getting a little bit tiresome. And I thought that if a unification bout between Joshua and Parker was to be announced, that this week was going to be the week that it would happen. And I'm not saying it won't or it can't, but we are running out of runway and the signs aren't looking promising. You might recall as well, David Higgins stated that he wouldn't be booking any flights to the UK until Eddie Hearn came closer to their demands. His quote was, we discussed meeting face-to-face, -face, but I can confirm I won't be flying there until there is further movement on their site. And with all that in mind, I thought, well, actually, I'll go to Duco. I'll check with them on the state of play, whether Higgins is going to be bound for the UK this week. Because you never know, they could pull a rabbit out of a hat. And this sort of thing, it often happens at short notice. But in response to my query, Duco's communications director, Craig Stanaway, responded with, no flights have been booked by anyone at Duco to go to the UK. Okay, so I followed up asking, was that an indication that negotiations have stalled? So Stanaway, he responded with a very carefully positioned statement. There remains desire on both sides to come to a mutually beneficial deal. So clearly you can take from that that they want to sort a deal out, but at the moment... We're in a bit of a standoff. No one wants to give an inch. Clearly Joseph Parker, he wants his 35%. Clearly Anthony Joshua wants to give less. The fact that Higgins has not yet scheduled to go to the UK, that would likely indicate that the possibility of a unification announcement this week is not very likely. Not impossible, just not likely. I guess this whole situation raises two questions for me which I'll pose, but we can tease them out at a later date if needed. But first one, how long can both sides keep pursuing this unification matchup if neither side wants to give up any ground? If they are just stuck in their respective positions, how long can it go on for? I re remember, they are talking about it taking place at the end of March, which is just over three months away. We know Anthony Joshua, he likes to have relatively long training camps, 10-12 weeks. And Parker, he generally has about an 8-week camp or so. So to make the date for the end of March, there really needs to be some movement now. I mean, even if you push that fight date out a couple of weeks out into April, you're only moving the goalposts out a few weeks. And there will come a point where both sides, they would just have to move on. I mean, at the end of the day, both guys do have other options. Joshua, he could turn to potentially sort out something with Deontay Wilder for the WBC belt. However unlikely that is, given that Wilder wants a 50% cut. 
He could also look at a rematch potentially with matchroom stablemate Dillian White. There'd be a lot of interest in the UK in that in particular. Jarrell Miller, he's also hooked into matchroom now, so that's a potentially another viable matchup, and it's another in-house fight. All the money stays in-house. And as I covered yesterday, Alexander Povetkin, he's now the number one challenger to Joshua's WBA Super Champion strap. So he could look to fast forward that, potentially just take it on as voluntary. And Joshua, he could well take on someone else if he wanted to as a voluntary. There are a lot of options for Joshua. Some of them won't give him a lot of credit, but there are other options out there where he would get credit, like a Povetkin fight. Parker, similarly, he has options. And he's got Lucas Brown basically waiting in the wings for a trans-Tasman clash. It's waiting there should the unification negotiations stall out. So Duco, they have outlined that there are also other options available in China, the US, and elsewhere. The second and perhaps more interesting question for me is, who will fans blame? Who will fans turn on? if an Anthony Joshua-Joseph Parker unification fight can't be made. I guess the respective fan bases, they will automatically blame the other fighter as being the problem. They weren't willing to give up enough. But for me, it'd be interesting to see which way neutrals would fall. I mean, certainly both promoters have been working very hard in the media to position the other side as being a bit unreasonable. Wanting too much, not giving up enough ground. In terms of what Duco's been doing, they are pushing that Parker, he's a world champion. He holds the WBO strap, and that should count for something. And given it's a two belts versus one belt occasion, with Joshua having the two, that 65-35 is fair, it feels about right. Two to one, and it's basically a two to one split. Whereas you have Eddie Hearn, he's sort of running the line that Joshua, who is the A-side, he's generating the bulk of the interest the bulk of the money in any unification matchup, so he deserves a much bigger slice of the pie. And that even offering 30% to a Joseph Parker is overpaying Parker. It will still be a massive paycheck. For me, both sides, they actually make some good points, respectively. But at the end of the day, neither can hope to become the undisputed champion without the other. Joshua, he's got a well-stated goal of becoming undisputed in 2018. And I guess we are seeing Team Parker taking advantage of that and effectively saying, well, if you want to go down that path and try to achieve that goal, you're going to have to give up more ground and meet our demands. Or it's not happening. At the end of the day, they don't have to fight. But if this thing is going to go ahead, the rubber will really have to hit the road and soon. Or else we'll basically see Joshua and Parker going their separate ways, going a different route. And that'd be a bit sad because, I mean, it'd be good if things did pan out because it would be a great fight for the fans. What do you make of it? What do you make of this impasse that we have reached and the fact that there is no sign at this point of Higgins going to the UK to finalise the unification bout with Eddie Hearn? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.